overlap here, rental property management software. Um, you know, we obviously saw Brevo and some of the solutions that they bring that integrate both in-unit and shared space trends. Why is this important, particularly when it comes to shared space? How are you seeing this used? Well, I know that we are seeing a lot of additional revenue streams is what we're hearing about from monetizing shared spaces. So whether it's the co-working space or if you need to rent, I don't know what we're calling them now, phone booths, but podcast <laughs> rooms, space booths, yeah. podcast rooms, all of these things. It can be a great initiative by using some of these software programs to create an additional revenue stream where there hasn't been before. And just to piggyback on that while I'm thinking about it is that, you know, we had JBL speakers, if you guys are familiar with that, they were able to come in and they wanted to shoot a commercial in Nashville last year for their Christmas commercial. I hope it comes out this year. Um, but they rented the whole space for a couple days and we made close to $8,000 just for them to use the space. Um, we had Walker Hayes come and do, you know, the Applebee's guy. Um, so he came in, you know, rented a space. So we are monetizing and making it an easy way to make money on every single space versus just amenities sitting empty at our yeah, previous apartments where now like investors and developers are like, how can we make money on our spaces and make rentals and people come and make content just for like photo shoots. So it's this Nexodus software and there's other ones out there, but it's a great way to make revenue on your property that otherwise could be sitting vacant. Yeah, I remember at our spring summit, and I'm not trying to remember who shared this, but they, they were experimenting with taking some of the amenities like the, the gym, that that had you know historically it's you just pay this much each month for the gym and kind of flipping the script on that and saying you don't pay for the gym unless you use it yeah. and there was integration with the access okay. points to where when it saw that you had used your your car to go into the gym that then triggered either a per use or that for that month you you paid that amount and, and obviously in order to accomplish something like that you've got to have some pretty deep integration into into your software and into yep. your billing. I know RealPage is really driving a lot of that innovation as well with a lot of their programs. And y'all, we also cannot understate the value of the data, right? If you use these softwares and then you're able to find out, do people actually use your pool? Are they actually using your co-working space? Right. Um, I can't tell you the number of times that no one in this room, I'm sure, but we thought we had a brilliant idea and you go to market with it and then it turns out that no one actually cares about that. Um, I think it's invaluable, the information that you get how often is the gym being used and by who? Because our assumptions are not always true. We really need to have the access and the knowledge around the data to back it up. Well, and then you can schedule cleaning. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, there's all kinds of operational issues that yeah. get informed by actual usage patterns. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, it, and all of that requires integration in a centralized place. And it, certainly if you have multiple properties, right? And you have an enterprise dashboard where you can really realize these efficiencies across, you know, multiple properties. So. Makes sense. Okay, another bit of overlap here. We move to, the, to instead of facing inward to owner operators, what type of website or apps are we using for the community? And, and how does that drive value um, or efficiencies? Back to the same thing we were talking about again. You know, if you know who's going in to use your pool and you're using that through app, you're giving them access on their phones. I mean, I don't know about you, but even just having to use a real hotel key these days, I'm like, Ugh what is this? <laughs> I would just have my phone. I need this. Um, so we're all so used to it. And I think, again, as we have a, entire generations that are coming up to be our future renters, that is what they are used to. I mean, if my child turns 18 and doesn't have her cell phone embedded in her forearm, I'll be shocked, right? So we really have to use these apps and the availability that we have of data to make sure that that is what you, they're using for access and that we're meeting them where they are. Yeah, and going back with just getting the data, I think it's really good to have a, a really good website provider and um, also a digital agency that you're working with. So um, right now we we were with um, Raz and we're actually doing a big overhaul and we have now signed up with G5 and Lease Labs. Um, I've used them in the past. They have award-winning websites with the scrolling architecture development. So it keeps people on your websites longer so they can scroll versus having to go to tab to tab. So I think having really good community First of all, websites, right? And then really good um, digital analytics behind that that's collecting data and scrolling your websites all the time for making sure you have the best keywords, the best search words on there, um, great meta tags that really fit your market um, so you can show it more organically because we all live for organic content. So, um, and that's what we want. So having a really good digital marketing strategy and a great digital provider that is giving you recommendations and constantly looking at your websites is really important for your technology behind the scenes to attract that, that customer. 
So as you're, you're pointing out that it's, it's important when we're talking about your, your website that you're gonna have your external facing when it comes to leasing and driving new subscribers versus also having something internally for your, your residents to be able to use. Right. And if you're, if you're not spending enough time and investment on either of those, you'll, you'll, you'll notice it. Right, it's a great investment to look at. And of course, now with the right integrations, you have you know maintenance requests going through the app, you have parcel delivery notifications going through the app, you have community social events going through the app. And so for young adults especially, where they lead a mobile lifestyle, you know, they're not scrolling through a bunch of emails necessarily, you know, it's all text and, and push notifications. That it, it's just, it's much more suited to the way people live than some of the old communication methods, the, 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 the apartment newsletter. Right. You know, once upon a time. Like on a piece of paper. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have residents all the time, they're like looking at floor plans, like it's time to renew, and they're like, oh, I see that unit 615 is going for this much right now, and I wanna transfer and get a bigger apartment. So just having everything transparent on your websites is so crucial, because people are gonna go there first and foremost, as well as your Google business page, which I could talk a whole panel about that, but you know. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, electric vehicle charging station. So um, how are you dealing with that currently? And, and, and I'd love to then talk about how do existing buildings retrofit? Because I'm sure it has to be a challenge. Uh, yeah, I, I, can, I can really focus on like the, the new design and the, and the new building aspect of it. We, we don't typically do retrofits, uh, but I, I know it would be a challenge. Uh, so I, I think there's regulations, right? Depending on where you're building, you're gonna be required to have so many spots that are EV ready or EV installed. Quartera uh, uh, basically our uh, general rule of thumb is 10% of the spaces will be ready with installed EV charging stations uh, with 20% growth capacity. So we'll, we'll have the ability to go up to 20% uh, with current infrastructure. Uh, those chargers may or may not be installed at just kind of point in time decision uh, per market. Okay. And those are those are local regulations or are those statewide regulations? Uh, mo most of them, Fremont, California, ironically, has like the highest percent. Denver, we have code now. <laughs> we're, we're breaking ground this winter and we have, we've already, we have to have so many in our parking garages. Mm. We have a community that overlooks Tesla and that's the, the highest, 15%. <laughs> just like lined up in the front right? yeah. <laughs> and I think we're going to continue to see um, some changes in patterns when it comes to to how people drive and if people drive I think you were just uh, telling us beforehand share what you'd seen in the news two fun facts I'm sure y'all can think it's thrilling to live with me because I'm like have you heard <laughs> they call me Chelseapedia but um, one of them is that there's a community actually locally here in Arizona that has no parking at all um, so that's really making waves getting a lot of press they're near a public um, transportation station but there is no parking on site and so I think that's something that we should be looking at how's that going what's the impact there and then um, I have worked in the past with a company called Parkade and I uh, was just talking with the owner there and they um, in LA I believe just made the regulation where there is no more required parking for your development. So the 1.2 parking spots per building is not gonna happen any longer um, there. And I think that'll be really interesting to see what the impact looks like when maybe the EV charging stations, if we don't have parking, then what are we doing, right? And not to pick on our industry, but I think we need to be a lot more future thinking and, and think like a futurist on what's it gonna look like down the road a little further when we're developing. Particularly in urban environments like yep. what we see here. I think sure. we were talking to one of your staff members last night who, who mentioned like, yeah, I've got my truck parked in the parking lot and I never use it since yep. I've moved here. It's just, uh, you know, where your location is can certainly influence how much you, you need um, that transportation. And uh, we, we took a, a group of students on a study abroad trip this uh, past summer to Amsterdam and Germany and, and you go into some of these denser cities where, yeah, cars is just not a thing. It's, it's between public transportation, between um, electric scooters, electric bikes. Uh, they can cover their needs. Um, and I think we'll, in certain communities, in certain cities, we're gonna see that kind of shift that way, I would think. I can so, see it. Yeah. And we may see car share services in multifamily. Uh, absolutely. Exactly. Right. Uh, that's so you could just, as needed, ad hoc basis, you know, and there's a half dozen cars, 
that sit there, and that, that wouldn't surprise me at all. I think walking over yesterday morning, I saw a Waymo car here in Phoenix, and I was kind of kind of scrambling real quick to see if there's action. Now, unfortunately, there's someone driving in, the, like at least watching, and I was like, oh, I really wanted to see a car that had no one in it. And I know I dated myself yesterday during our panel, so I hate to do it again, but I am stunned when I'm talking to 16, 18, 19 year olds who don't have their driver's license. Are you guys right. seeing this? Like yes. there, there is not this, um, I don't know, I couldn't wait. I had mine at 15 right, and like, yeah, I was so excited. But you don't need it anymore. They get to talk to their friends all the time. They don't have to you know, sneak out to do it at a parking lot somewhere. And they have the delivery services available to them. So what is that generational impact gonna look like for us? We really need to be thinking about how are we going to rent to and how are we gonna accommodate possibly an entire generation that maybe they finally do get their driver's license, but they don't even really care about that and driving isn't a priority to them like it is to us yeah, older I think, folks. Wanna, <laughs> I think they want to spend their money on other experiences. Yeah. You know, that's what we're finding in this generation coming up. And I mean, I'm a really old millennial, but you know, everybody's really financially conscious and um, you know, everything kind of sucks. Their, they get into debt really quickly. Um, so I think having that extra debt of a car and they're like, oh, well, I'm just going to move here for a little bit and I have my furnished department and I don't need to have all these extra things to pay for and I can go you know, go to Europe and, you know, put that money somewhere versus a car that I don't drive. So I think this generation coming up is very financial conscious. I mean, they, they are very conscious of it. So, so in a world where the, there's not regulations from a government level requiring you to put in parking spaces or, or it's significantly less than what it has been historically, how does that strategically change your, your financial calculus for a building? Like if you, you had 50% less parking and could have units in there, or storage, on-site storage, yes. you know, we, the properties we have storage at, like, stay full. Um, and you can charge, I mean, hundreds of dollars for that instead of an empty parking space. So getting creative and using, like, an 8 by 8 storage instead of parking, you know, would be an option as well. Or if we really start thinking outside the box and we think about what could that space be used for when we talk about shared spaces, right? So could this mean now that we have buildings where you have a ton more availability to have green spaces or, you know, um, have more environmental impact there? Are you gonna have on-site services that maybe you didn't have previously? The age-old question of all the packages. I know there's so many solutions now that we're seeing, but I really think if we start looking at what it could look like in the future, we could change the face of how these developments are arranged and it doesn't have to be the standard that we've seen, which is a building and parking and a courtyard, yep. maybe a pool, right? And I look forward to that, seeing what, what innovation comes around. All right, okay. Moving on to eye cafes, and so the, the interpreti interpretation of this is maybe a little bit different. This could be describing where you've got a third party vendor coming in and having a, a small little Starbucks like kiosk in your shared space or providing it yourself. I think we saw some, some examples at Connect of, of kind of little, yep. little stations where um, people can get their own cafe. What what are, what are we seeing? What is driving this? And how is it being received by, by residents? Well, I'll jump in. Yeah. Um, it, this is a picture of Nashville. Um, and our co-working space there is actually 16,000 square feet. Um, if anybody's ever in Nashville, wants a day pass, just send me a little email and I'll get you in there. Um, but we have two, two communal cafes, two coffee bars, um, community refrigerator here. And you never know who you're gonna meet in these iCafes. So it's just another awesome way to, to incorporate a shared space in your property. I've been a, just getting a cup of coffee. I'm like, hey, what do you do? What do you do? And then I'm connecting people that in another office space, you know, with a graphic designer versus, you know, somebody in the music industry. So um, using these as a shared spaces where people are, are always congregating and creating and collaborating, I think is really important to have in your properties, um, especially as people are, are working from home, you know, do a midday pop-up lunch with HelloFresh and maybe a meditation and get people out of their apartments and come down and um, just, you know, take that midday break and then all of a sudden people are connecting and, and sharing ideas. Um, we're actually launching a food and beverage at, at Connect. It's called Market and um, MRKT. And we have, um, in the morning time, it's gonna be grab and go healthy. We're really focused on like healthy grab and go. And at night it turns into a cocktail, um, happy hour kind of bar where you can meet with friends or clients at night. So having that grab and go food and beverage um, in your lobbies can also bring in more traffic, more revenue um, and more exposure for your property. 
And I think in a future slide, you kind of talk about all the different amenities and, and putting a price tag to that. And I think yes. you had one for, for coffee saying, if you don't have to go to Starbucks every morning and get a $3 cafe, you, you can get one here. Yeah. You know, that, that adds up. That's a you know, $200, $300 value over the course of the month. It was $140 or something a month. Just one cup of coffee at like $6 a day for five days a week. And my, my coffees are like... Don't tell hard. anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like, it's so expensive. So if you could have craft coffee, cold brew on tap, you know, all day long, stay jacked up and creative, like, it's, it's a great money saver, too. I think it's also about keeping your residents not to sound like we want to have a prison, we don't, but keeping them at your property yeah. so that they can make those connections and they can be there. Um, I don't know how many of you have seen Panera just started a program where I think it's like 99 cents or something, but you have like a, a membership and you can go in and always get a cup of coffee. That's not about the coffee, right? How many of you have taken a conference call in a Panera? It's because they know that people need to have somewhere to go sit and have this space to do work or whatever and so they're trying to capitalize on that and i think that's you know one of the things that our industry can take that back and say come here stay here and we all know resident communication and connection and that sense of connection really increases resident satisfaction which has been proven to increase revenue overall so the more you can make those connections the better mm -hmm. So when you look at the market, where you're launching, what, what's the technology going to be behind that? How will they pay? Yeah, so we'll be using our Stripes. So I really, really like Stripe. It's a great revenue management software. Um, and you can get, you, there's a lot of reporting on that as well. Um, we have a third party vendor called C3 that will be managing that for us. So they come in with their professionality, their staff. You know, it's kind of a business inside the business, but you know, there's a revenue share and it's under our brand. And we get to have um, goods and healthy grab and go and things in there as well. So they'll staff it, they'll have someone yep, there. Yep, they staff it. it. We're stuff. just creating the whole brand Point behind stuff. it with our aprons, our color palette, you know, all the fun marketing stuff. Nice. Okay, business center, workstation, printers, seems pretty relevant as we're coming out of the pandemic. We're seeing many more people working from home and, and definitely exemplified by what Connect is doing with, with on-site co-working that, that really you can have your, your relatively small room upstairs, but then you've got a huge living room that you can use for work, for play. Um, who, who wants to start here and talk about what what you what you're doing and what you see happening in the future yeah so uh I, i'll jump in so uh, you know it's something i thought that was gonna die years and years ago was the the business center uh which i think it's just kind of ad adapted a little bit what we see is really all common areas all shared spaces end up being like a, a co-work space uh you'll have folks at the dining room table if you walk through they'll be working all just all throughout the building uh but then to, to have that option of in the, uh, the co-work space, you have a printer, they can send print jobs. Uh, the ones we use are basically just email based so you can send it from anywhere you want uh, at any time and then you just get a code. You go down there when you're face to face with the printer, type in the code, it spits out the print job. Uh, so just providing kind of that flexibility uh, for people to run some print jobs. But uh, you know, I, I think the, the co-work and just getting out of your own little space. Uh, it, it really is just good for heart and soul and, and the sense of community as well. And then we've talked a lot about new builds and new construction, like these are gorgeous properties. But when I think about some of the things I've seen that are really interesting, I'm in Austin, Texas. We've got a couple communities that have retrofitted their models because now they're doing more virtual leasing. They think the model isn't needed anymore. They took walls out fitted it with big open windows, gave them a big patio, and that's now a co-working space. So I think it's a really cool option that it doesn't just have to be for new construction, new lease-ups, new developments. You can also think about how to reuse spaces that are maybe stagnant in the properties that you already mm -hmm. have. Yeah, I think people like to find their little nooks, yep. you know, still, but as you can see here, this is Nashville, and um, these, do these desks over here are actually dock desks. Um, so people can rent those. That's like where you come to work every day. That's like your desk. Um, but as you can see, the open floating co-working space there as well. Um, but people still like to find our little nooks, you know, going into little phone booths or, you know, going in the meditation rooms and taking phone calls. But um, it's just great to any budget, you know, for, for properties to cater to that market because it's here to stay. Yeah. 
as we saw in the slides yesterday. Yeah. I think one thing for the future to think about for these workspaces is acoustics. Um, we really have to think about when you have to take a call or you need to be on another Zoom conference <laughs> or Teams meeting, where can people do that in your space that makes sense and isn't gonna be disturbing to others? Um, I think these big open spaces are so beautiful aesthetically, but we've also gotta consider like you guys have with the smaller spaces where they can go and be on a video call or on a telephone call. And, and, and combining the acoustic with the lighting as well, yeah. because we all realized how important that is to have good light when you're on the Zoom call, even if right. you're in a, a small booth. Right. And to piggyback on that, you're also teaching etiquette now mm -hmm. um, because there's so many different people in different industries now working together and everybody's call is super important. We're all passionate about what, what we do. Um, one thing we did at Connect, because I didn't want to keep walking around and being like, can you put your headphones on? You know. <laughs> so um, actually Millie, our executive director, I was like, Millie, can we get branded little ear pods, you know, or uh, the earbuds, and then we put like, um, we put them in a, a screen uh, baggy. So now I just go over and I'm like, here, here's some earbuds. And they're like, oh my gosh, thank you. So we're also teaching etiquette, also dress codes in these places. Um, and you can do this really subtly. You don't have to just go up and be a, a mean boss about it and be like, you shouldn't be in here in your flip flops. You know, it's a business casual um, place, especially when residents live there. This is an extension of their home. So we're also teaching etiquette and um, business etiquette in these co-working spaces that people are now working around each other. Bathroom, which is something I, yeah, I was gonna well, say we do a bagel of berries and every phone. Tuesday and I mean, people just come down like barefoot, you know, I'm just like, come on people, you know, and the, but then you have co-working people. I thought it was just based up, come on, <laughs> exactly. haven't you learned it's just yeah. based up, everything below, yeah. you know, don't but, ask, yeah. no. Yeah, we have people there that come just to work there every day, they don't live there, so we also are teaching etiquette, which is, you know, something we got to get with as well. Yeah. <laughs>